Hello, today I'm bringing you a Pepsi advert tutorial. We'll be making this inside of Cinema 4D, Octane Render and Photoshop. The end result will be fairly basic, we're not going to do anything too complicated. I mostly want to emphasize creating a can inside of Cinema 4D and I thought I would make it into a whole advert tutorial just to add some more value. So we'll start off by making the top of the can, then we will do the rest of the body. We'll make the graphic inside of Photoshop and then we will render it out of Octane and then do final composition inside of Photoshop once again. So the top view, we will need a reference image. Um, I've gone and grabbed a reference image off the internet and I've gone inside of Photoshop and sort of adjusted it to, to fit so that it's more useful for more usable as a reference image. It's um, not perfect, but you can use whatever you want. And I've thought about, I'm thinking about putting my projects on Patreon, but at the moment I haven't done that yet. So none of the files that I'll be using will be available to download, unfortunately, but I'm sure you can find your own versions online. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about um, putting my projects for tutorials and stuff on Patreon. So that might be a future thing that I might add in. But we'll start off with doing the top of the can. So we'll insert a cylinder. Now I do have a reference in front of me. I have a Coke can, which I'll be able to measure and just use as a uh, measuring reference so I can get real world sort of measurements out and it'll end up looking more realistic in the end. I'm not going to try and make it um, perfect or as real as the real thing. You can spend hours um, getting all the fine details down if you want, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'll keep things nice and basic, nice and quick. So my can is 5.7 centimeters in radius. So um, I mean in diameter, so I'm going to divide that by two. And then I'm just going to reduce the height to like five. And then I'll make it editable and then I'll just delete the bottom row of lines here. We don't need that. Um, make it editable again. I mean, optimize it. And then we want to adjust the reference until it fits the can size. So here, if I go over here, if I just reduce this down to one, then we hit S just so oh, hit S here, just so that um, we focus on the object. Now we can increase our radius, our reference size again to somewhere like there, six is, let's go seven. And then we can just um, think we will try and get this reference. We'll, we'll adjust it the reference way instead of doing the can. So I think we'll adjust it like this. So just so that when we do the measurements for the rest of the can, it's, it's the same. Um, so I guess that's all right. Um, Cool. So we'll start off by modeling the top. What we'll do is we will, I'm using 22, um, 22 rotation segments, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that, but you can sort of see, but anyways, we'll, we'll just add some lines in here and like that. And then we can sort of start adjusting the lines, um, as we go along. So we'll move these up here and I'm going to use the left side of the can. It's not perfectly centered. So I'm going to use the left side of the can as a reference. Um, as you can see here, it's offset on the right. So I don't want to use both sides. I just want to use one side so that I can make sure that it's even. Um, so I'm just going to take these and I'm using the left side here to align these points around this curve here like so. Now there's plenty of different types of um, can tops, so you can use whatever you want. I found that this one was the, uh, was a very basic one, very simple one, doesn't require too much going on. Uh, that's why I picked this one in particular. So here we're just going to go and scale these in until they sort of curve around and match, like so. And you can scale this in as well, like so. Boom, so everything's matching nicely. I'm going to select all the inside faces and then I'll just um, hit dissolve. And then I'll start connecting these lines here together. I'm not gonna connect all of them together, just um, these. Then we can go from top to bottom as well, and then top to bottom like so. And I think we need to do this as well, just so that we have a square here and we don't have any end gones anywhere. Um, so if you wanna see what I've done so far, I can just um, make this transparent. So this is what our, um, object looks like right now. And then we're going to take these two points here. We'll push these down here, take these two, push these down here. Uh, maybe scale these in 
this part isn't going to be perfect and like I said you can spend as much time as you want getting these things to be as accurate as possible but I'm not going to do that so I think we'll start off by giving this thing some depth um, so I think what I will do is we will extrude this um, there's multiple ways we can do this I think I want to how do we want to do this actually? That's a good question. I think first we will do this. We'll select these. Uh, we will extrude inner like so. Then we will take these lines here like so. And let's just select all the lines on the inside as well like so. We'll push this down and maybe I also want to scale these in as well so if I just select these just want to scale them in slightly and then what we can do here is we can extrude inner like so and then push this down and I think that looks fine so here if I add in a loop here add in a loop here add in a loop over here and here and then we go and smooth it out we should be getting the top of the can looking fairly accurate um, you can obviously do adjustments if you like. Um, like so you can just drag these out so it's a bit more even and such just add another like that and that's the basic concept on that section um, <coughs> And then here on the sides, this is pushed down like that. And I'm using my real world reference here now. So should be something like so, like so. It doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. Uh, it can be if you wanna go that far, but um, for me, I'm not going to go through the effort of making it super perfect. So I'm just gonna go like so like that and then I think this needs to extrude down oh I just made a mistake let's do that again zero and then just push this down and then we'll add in some supporting lines just so that we can get some more definition so I think this needs to be small view clipping so here we add in a line there, a line there. Um, we can add in a line up here, 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 um, here, here. Maybe we'll add in one there as well and then just get rid of this one. And then we want a line here and here. So now if we smooth this out, you can sort of see what we're getting um, in terms of our can. Uh, we can do this cap part as well for the sake of it. Um, we're not actually going to see this in the final render, so it doesn't really matter. But in case you want to rotate your can and stuff, that's um, I'm going to do it just in case you want to actually show the top. Um, a lot of my can adverts haven't ever shown the top, so <laughs> haven't bothered too much with that. Um, my original, in my original projects, I have gone in a lot of detail with it though. But for the sake of the tutorial, I can't really spend hours and hours just refining everything. Um, that won't work out very well so here I'm just gonna uh, here I just created a cube and we will add in a loop here at 50% we will select these faces like so just let's just solo it um, so uh, we'll go extrude inner we'll just unpreserve the groups and we'll delete those faces then we can just sew everything up again um, using our bridge tool in line mode like so just close up the holes like that boom 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 and now what we can do is this is all personal choice you can make this however you want but I found this to be just a simple method um, of doing it so now we're gonna go and smooth this out let's make this three and then using this view we can sort of adjust it um, until it matches so here we can push this up can scale this out slightly 
this bottom piece, we can push this down a bit. Um, here we can scale this out. Do we want to though? No, let's leave that alone. Um, here there's this like um, little round piece sticking out. So I think what we can do here is we can, um, not bevel, we can extrude it out slightly. We can scale it in and then we can extrude it out again. Uh, maybe that far, we can scale it out. Then we can extrude it one more time, just scale it in slightly, and then we can take a look at what this looks like. That does not look too great. So, um, <laughs> so let's just see what we have so far. So we will adjust everything um, towards the reference. Um, so it's a bit hard to see right now. Let's just see what we can change. If I make this a bit more transparent. Um, still a bit difficult to see what's actually going on. Anyways, um, we don't really need the top view anymore. Um, so here we'll just adjust these slightly and then sort of get this to look a bit more accurate. And I think what we'll do is maybe take these lines here and let's just push these out a bit. And then what else would we want to do with this? I don't like the way this is looking right now. So I think this should be scaled in quite a bit. So here I would scale this in. I would take this row of lines here and maybe these lines as well and just push these out like so. Push this back and we can take another look and see if this looks a bit more accurate. No. So maybe these should be pushed in slightly. Um, let's just now we're just playing around and seeing what we want this to look like. Like I said, there's plenty of types um, out there, so there isn't really an accurate version of it. There's multiple variations online. So, I mean, not online, but just in the world in general. So now we can see what we're working with and maybe see what we want to do with this. Maybe if we add in a loop somewhere, maybe in the middle, um, we can see what that looks like. Um, see now that part's a bit more smoothed out. So I think here we can push this out and here we can take these two over here, maybe this whole row and just push this back. Now we're getting more of what we were looking for. Maybe take this line here and um, push this down slightly, something like that. Then we can just take this whole thing and just adjust it and push it down until it's hitting this can here like so um, we can take all these lines let's do points can take all these points here maybe scale the whole thing just down like that and then we can take this whole thing and push it up like so cool um, I think this part here needs to be pushed back a bit, maybe scaled in. So if I take these points here and then scale it in, I think that looks slightly better like so. And here, I think this needs to be, this whole row needs to be pushed up slightly and maybe in. So we're getting a bit more of a rounding. And this front part here, I think maybe needs to be pushed out slightly. Cool. And then what we can do, um, there's this little cap thing on the top. So this is nice and simple to do. You can just create a cylinder, um, make this point one. You can push this up, make this point to point one. And then we can add some caps think three segments is fine and we can just make it like 50 rotation segments maybe even scale it down like 0.5 and then this fong angle should be 90 that's a bit strange why is this clipping like that um, oh there we go 
guess that's okay. Um, if I increase that, then I can lower this amount. Cool. Guess that's fine. Doesn't really matter as long as you're gonna add that much render time to your render. So um, this is still too big. I'm not. I should actually look at my real world reference. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this should be like point two. And then it should be placed somewhere like here. Cool. And I might want to add a line in the middle here just to harshen this out a bit because I feel like it's too round. And then here I can just scale the whole thing in. Like that. It obviously depends on what you want to do and how far you want to take this um, with your detail and stuff, but I guess this is okay for a can top. Um, so now we can name all of this top, group it and name this top. And then we can start working on the rest of the body. But I think first I want to make sure that um, all of this is equal to 5.7 in width, just so that it matches up with the rest of the bottle's references. So um, actually we don't, I don't care about that. So. I think what we'll do now, um, I haven't actually finished this part here, so I'm just going to quickly do that. We're just going to go and um, extrude this zero and then scale it in and we'll go extrude and then we'll push this up like so and then we'll add in a loop here. Cool. So now we'll create a new cylinder. Um, here we'll go 5.7 divided by 2. It's like 5. And then we will make it editable. We will um, <clears throat> just scale it slightly. And maybe scale it up as well. And we can get rid of the top faces. We don't need those. I feel like I, yeah, I did. Um, just delete this face on its own. And um, now I'm going off actual real world reference. I'm not trying to be super accurate. Um, so here I'm just gonna go and sort of adjust these to what I think it would look like. So here I'm gonna go and scale this out. You can use uh, a real world reference and measure it if you want, but I don't think I wanna do that. So I'm just gonna scale this out. And then it looks like there should be a loop here. It looks like there should be a loop here as well. And maybe one here. So I think this should be squashed in slightly and this should be squashed out slightly. And then I think these lines here at the bottom should be a bit longer just to get more of a can shape. And then this point here should come down like so and we can take oops we can take these um, I think we can extrude this like so like so extrude in preserve groups like so and then we can extrude this one push this up extrude again push it up then maybe we can even add in another line here and I'm completely improvising. I'm not even looking at the real world reference anymore. Um, something like that. Maybe you can put a line here in the middle. I think this would be cool if we added a line here and maybe you made this a bit more curved. So I think we need to add a line here, a line here. And then here we can go and scale this in slightly. And now let's smooth this and see what this looks like going completely off um, real world reference right now. So this three. And then here I think I'll add in a line just center a centered line just so that it's um straight cool so that's a can um actually looks very fairly similar to the real world thing so that's done fairly well and i feel like this edge here is a bit too harsh so let me just smooth that out and at the bottom i was also seeing a bit of a harsh edge so maybe i should smooth that out as well um like so cool so that's how to make a can inside of Cinema 4D. Um, fairly basic can, uh, doesn't have a lot of de details. 
Um, next, what we will do is we will create the graphic inside of Photoshop. So we'll start off by opening up Photoshop. Inside here, we will start off by 2000, uh, a 2K resolution texture. So we'll go 2048, 2048. Um, we'll start off with a square and then just adjust it as we go along. So here, I'm going to use this Pepsi logo here, and then we'll use this Pepsi graphic here. So now we have a logo version and a text version, which are both um, vector graphics. So I think what I want to do here is maybe convert this to a smart object. And then in here, I think I will just create a square or rectangle and then just go ahead and crop this down, delete that and save. Cool. So now we have our logo. If we go and scale this, um, we'll be scaling it nice and proportioned. And then we also have a Pepsi vector graphic here. And I think I want to make this 90 degrees this way, like so. And here I'll create a solid color. Just use that color. I will make our text white, like so. And then here I'll just scale this up. And it's all vector files, so it doesn't really matter how much I scale it, it'll still look perfect. I'm lying, this is not a vector file. Um, this is not vector. Or is it? It is, I think this should be, let's do 2000 and then see. Cool, so I made a mistake there. Save that, and now if you scale this down, it should look nice and dandy. That's where I nearly made a mistake with my smart objects. So, cool. <clears throat> now I'm going to use a. I'm going to use the actual project as a reference. Um, so here, if I go and look in here, we'll be using one of my can renders as a reference. We're not going to create the drops. That's for another tutorial. Um, but yeah, so this Pepsi vector part should be scaled down slightly like so. And then we'll go make this a bit more rectangular. I think I'll make this width 3000. We'll save it and then we'll save it as, um, uh, Pepsi can, uh, assets. We'll save it as graphic. Cool, so now we can set up our scene and start to actually visualize and place all the, the details of how this can looks and stuff. So um, we'll start off with composition. We'll insert a camera, like so. We'll go with a 1920 by 1080 render. Um, we'll go PNG, 16 bits with an alpha channel. And then we'll just create a save location here. I think I'll go renders. Save it as render one. Then we can untick save. We can change this to octane render. And then we'll set up the camera. So it'll make the camera, or maybe I should actually go here and name this body. Body. And then here I will go and center this axis at the bottom. Um, we will create a group null in that point, and then we'll put all of this under here, inside here as can. And then we can just place this on the floor by zeroing out the Y. So now we have that sitting on the floor. We can insert our um, render safe, so we can see where our um, edges are and we can make the zero zero we can change this to a portrait lens we can zoom out quite a bit something like so is fine and then let's make this zero um something like that's that's fine and then what we can do let's make this eight <laughs> Now we can start um, actually messing around with Octane. So bringing up our live viewer, we'll insert a light source and we will use this for now as our light source. And we can insert a glossy material. This will be our graphic. So here I can go and 
boom. And now we can insert our graphic here by going and finding our graphic here. Like that. And we can apply this to our body. And then we'll just go and change this to cylindrical. And, and then we'll go and fit to object. Yes. And then we can rotate our whole can if we like. Oh, if you want, you can make this match. You can just rotate the body instead. So rotate that 90 degrees. We can turn off our textures from our viewport. And then we can also hide this, these lines by turning off our show cone in our camera settings. There we have our graphics sitting nicely. Um, we actually want to separate this bottom piece here. Um, so I think what we want to do here is Firstly, I think I need to make sure that the normals are facing the right way. So these normals are facing the right way and the top normal should be facing the right way as well. Cool. Now what I was going to do is just isolate these bottom pieces because we want these bottom pieces here to be um, aluminum color, not the graphic color. So we select these, then we go fill selection, set selection, and then here we can create a metal texture. So we'll call this metal. We'll just turn up the index for now. And then here we will just put the selection tag inside the metal texture. And now if I go and bring up the live viewer again, <coughs> that's what we want to see. So here I can go right click for to object again. And then we can start adjusting everything. So um, I feel like, let's take a look at the actual texture, let's see where this is placed. I feel like this should be maybe squashed down slightly and pushed up. Let's squash it up a bit more, like that. And then here, I feel like this should be maybe a bit wider, save it and then update it here. Like so, okay, so that's maybe too wide. Maybe we'll go and make this 3.5. Reload. Um, cool, so we're getting closer to what we actually want. Now, if we take a look at my can here, we can use this as a reference. This logo here should be a lot bigger, so here we can go and scale this up like so this text maybe should be a slightly smaller so push this to the side push this down let's take another look at the reference cool save it and then reload all right so maybe too much and this is where like the find the minor adjustments start coming in where you just slightly adjust things as you go along i obviously don't want to spend too much time doing that. So I think, I guess that's fine for now. Um, now if we take a look at our reference one more time, cool. I think this background should be maybe, be, uh, maybe be darker. So let's go 30. We can save that. And then here I'll group this together and maybe add a white outer glow towards it. So like something like so, reduce this. And then I think here I want a graffiti background um, just to keep it um, the same as the thumbnail. Why does it keep going to this folder? It's so annoying. So here we need to insert this little graffiti background. I just got this off the internet. It's like the first thing I saw. Um, and then here we can just go hue saturation. You can colorize it to a certain color and just do something like this. Let's go 40. Here we can just slide this down. Here we can add in some curves as well. And here we can just go and darken this slightly. So now we can save it. We can reload it here. And that's what we have. So I'm gonna darken this a bit more. Maybe go in here and darken that there. Reload. Cool. You get the point. Um, so 
Now for our metal texture, we can go and make this diffuse black. We can go and add in some roughness. Um, with this here, we can add in some scratches, but very slight scratches. I'm not going to go in detail with all the overlays and stuff. Um, but here I'm just going to add in some slight scratches. So like that, here we can change this projection to box, the UV transform to point five. Let's go point one. And then here, 0 0.1. We can just add a, we can lock the camera and then we can go out of it just so we can get a closer look. So maybe this should be 0 0.05. And then we can just go copy this bump map and then paste it in our metal. Like so. So if you take a look from far away, um, that looks all right. We can go and hit alpha chat. Ooh, we can go and change this to path tracing, 2000. 100 samples, or I mean 100 GI clamp, we can go alpha channel, untick, um, keep environment. We can change our exposure here to 2.2, our gamma, sorry, to 2.2, just make this linear. And then I think we'll want some shadows going, so we'll create a floor, um, just create a plane. Um, we'll make a bend deformer under that. We'll just make this 90 degrees and we can rotate this bend deformer uh, 90 degrees this way and rotate it 90 degrees this way and we can just increase this slightly and here we can go and just adjust these lines like so. Yeah we can just go 90 here and then just decrease this and then decrease this down, up, down. So then we can move our floor back and we can also move our floor down. So now here we can go and take a look and see what this looks like. Cool. We can create a diffuse material. Uh, we'll call this BG and we'll go and tick mat and we'll apply it to our plane. And now if we move this plane up, it should be catching shadows and shit, but it's not doing that. Oh, there we go. Cool. So that's the shadows that I wanted to catch. And then here we can push this like so as well. That's too close, way too close. Um, like so, and then if I take a look here, maybe this should be down a bit. And then we can just play around with our actual HDRIs. Um, increase the power to three, and then we can start flipping through our HDRIs and just pick one that we that we like. So, so I think we will go with Montreal Photorealism. Um, that one. Let's just reload this and see if, what it looks like. And I could probably rotate this slightly like that way and then just bring this floor up like so. Um, we can go and rotate this so that the shadows are a bit more directed. Rotate it like so. If I make this a bit brighter, let's go six. Um, here I think I should go and turn up my highlight compensation and then then I think we're pretty much good to go. Um, I think I should play around with this floor just so we can get our shadows a bit more the way we want it to look. I guess that's all right. Um, so what we can do now is we can go and hit render and pump it out to um, Photoshop. I'm just gonna apply this, make sure that my texture, my metal texture is applied on everything as well. So just apply it to the top. And like I said, you're not gonna see the top, so it doesn't really matter. But this metal here, this bump map is too strong. So I think I should reduce this to two five. And now we're gonna go hit render and shoot it out into Photoshop. All right, so now our render is done. We can go and open up a Photoshop document, uh, 1920 by 1080p. 
we will make this background white and I'll be using an actual Coke Pepsi advert as a reference. That's where I got this whole idea from. Um, what we'll do is we'll insert our render. We will actually insert the reference as well, um, just so we can steal some colors off of that. So we'll create a new solid color and then we'll make it same blue as this. And then what we can do is we can put this as the background like so. We'll save it as um, composition, maybe. Compo composition. And already we're seeing that this can is way too close towards the camera. So we're just going to move this camera back quite a bit. And then maybe even push it down to like seven. Maybe push the floor down slightly. And then we'll just hit render out. Uh, we'll just render out another one again. Cool. So our second render is done. We can insert our new image over here. Take a look like so. Now this looks a bit better. So we'll start off by just creating some white spots around here as that we can use like as light almost. And we can just go ahead and center this, scale it out quite a bit, and then do a duplication of a smaller one. The bigger one, we can hit soft light on that one. And then the smaller one, maybe just make it a slightly bit bigger like that. We can go and group this. We can duplicate the group and just push this down. You can scale this down like so. Uh, the shadow I'm not a huge fan of. Maybe we should play around with the HDRI um, and get a better shadow out of that. But I guess we can create our own just by creating a black spot like so. Centering it and doing something like that. Here we can go and reduce this opacity down maybe like 60, um, so like that. This is all creative choices, but you know, we don't need the actual 3D shadow. We can just create our own like though, like so. And this light can go like that. And how do you want these to be arranged is the question. I think this is better. And then what else could we do? Um, the text, every, Pepsi refreshes the world. Is that what it says? Yes. So here we can make this white. Um, Pepsi. And we can center this text as well. I'm using a Questrial font right now. And then here we can write another one. Pe See, um, keep missing that P. That's a bit strange of me. <laughs> um, uh, here, I think we'll be we'll, we'll use this font, um, and then this Pepsi inside here. We can just delete and just space add in spaces for this Pepsi word here. Um, this Pepsi word we can just plop in there. We can take another look and see what this looks like. If we zoom in. Uh, cool. So here we want a, uh, a drop shadow and we can duplicate that. We can just place this below, drop it down like that. We can remove the layer style. We can make this one a bit of a bluish color like that. And we can go copy that bluish color. And here we can go and add a stroke on it just so we have some rounded edges, which is what I saw in there final image. So here if I go outside and just go copy that color and we take another look, we should be getting something like that. So let's drop shadow. Maybe I'll reduce the opacity to 50 or oh, 70. All right, cool. So that's that part done. I might even add in a gradient just for some extra effect reset to default and then just do something like that. And then here there's also some liquid. Uh, get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. There's some liquid floating around. So you can do this however you want. But here I've gone and um, brought in some liquids to play around with. So 
which one do we want to start with? We can start off with this one. And here we can place this under the bottle. Like so, something like that. Um, maybe we can just get rid of this bottom piece here. We can insert the next liquids. Let's just see. I think we'll do something like this. So we'll put this at the back of the bottle. Um, like so. Maybe we can go and hide this, and hide that. And this is all just me improvising right now. Um, you can obviously do whatever you want to do. Like so, and then this final piece, we could maybe just do that and then just hide this piece here so it sort of blends in a bit better. Anyway, um, I think that's not bad for a um, Pepsi advert. Um, right now it all comes down to adjusting the minor details and stuff um, in the end. Yeah, maybe you can go and add in a gradient. We go, or maybe instead of doing it that way, we just add in a square like this. And, or even better, we can add in a 500 by 500 square. We can go convert this to a thingy. Um, and then we can go here and add in a gradient on top of this, a circular gradient. Radial, reverse, and we can save it. And then here we can take this so that it matches, so we can create our own vignette this way. And multiply, and I think this should be touching the ground here, which is not. And here we can just go and decrease that amount. And in here we can go ahead and adjust this um, like so. Take another look. Um, I think this should be maybe maybe if I go and reduce this down. Like so, maybe if I make this white and then here I can go and adjust the opacity as well. Save, boom. Have a slight gradient to the image. It all depends on what you want to do, but that's how you can make a Pepsi advert. Very, very basic, like I said, nothing too advanced, nothing too technical, but this is the process of how you can create something like this. The rest you can go inside of Cinema 4D, add in some scratches, fingerprints, stuff like that, mind your details, whatever you want to do. But hope you guys enjoyed, have a great day. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe. I will see you guys on my next tutorial. Have a good day and goodbye.